Hello everyone and thank you much for watching, this is me Mr. P and this is another episode in a Proxmox Tutorials. I've been running Proxmox on my very old laptop for over a month now, a bit maybe more, and obviously during that time a lot of things will receive updates, patches and etc. And obviously one of them needs to be TrueNAS. So in this video we'll show you how you can update TrueNAS safely inside your Proxmox environment, how I did it already on my main, basically my main Proxmox, so I'm just going to recreate the steps inside this tutorial prepared Proxmox environment. First thing what you need to do, you need to make sure that anything that is attached to uh, to the TrueNAS is shut down or is not using the files that are located inside the TrueNAS. In my case is virtual machine, Windows 11 virtual machine, which is currently off, so that's fine. And I have a cloud virtual machine, which hosting file browser Docker container. So I need to make sure that this is off. Just I'm going to go inside the built-in terminal for this virtual machine and run a command shut down space now press enter. So this is shutting down. I know that no one's going to log into a file browser web GUI and start accessing files while I am updating the TrueNAS virtual machine. So this is off. Everything is off. Cloudflare can stay up because I know Cloudflare is not linked to a TrueNAS in any way. So right now only one thing that is important is the TrueNAS. First thing what I need to do or what I did as well on my main Proxmox instant is I done a backup. So I'm just going to run a TrueNAS backup and under notes before the the brackets I'm just gonna put uh, update just to make sure that I know what that is when just in case if something happens I can go back and restore my TrueNAS main drive is only 32 gigabytes in size so actual backup should take quite quick and here we go I have a backup done for TrueNAS just in case if something happens I can restore from this backup now let's go inside the TrueNAS okay I need to log in again because the timeout, TrueNet has a timeout, I think of 60 seconds or something, that is going to automatically log you out. So on the left hand side, if you click on a system and then updates, this is the page you will see. And right now, as you can see, is selected under TrueNet scale, Angelfish. And if I click on a drop down, the one below is Bluefin. And the Bluefin is the newest version of the TrueNet. So I'm going to select this and it's going to say switch update trains. Basically, I'm changing from one location to another, which is going to do uh, an update. I'm going to say yes, that's fine and click continue. And then the button from the actual install manual updates files, the next one, next button on the left appeared, which says download updates. I'm going to click on that and it says save configuration files. I'm going to say, yeah, passwords and secret seeds. Yeah, let's include that as well and click save. And it's asking me, do you want to download this just in case if something happens? I'm going to say, yeah, I'm happy to download, apply and reboot the system and click download. And right now TrueNAS going and fetching all the updated files and will automatically restart the TrueNAS. This is why we disconnected all the systems, all the virtual machines and everything from the TrueNAS because TrueNAS will have to restart. So TrueNAS successfully downloaded and automatically restarted. As you can see, it's been up for two minutes. So right now there is a couple of new user interface changes that I actually quite like. First of the first one of them, if you click right now on storage, it gives you all the information about the storage without a data set. So it gives you exactly what's going on how much storage you're using and everything's healthy, how much temperature, etc, 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 all the information in one place. And if you click inside the data sets, this is where all the information about the data sets and Z volumes presented. If right now I'm going to go down into the folder structure and here we go, I can see all the data sets and Z volumes I created. And on the right hand side, I see all, all the information about data sets. I can see how much is allocated how much for example this is allocated so this is allocated 520 if i click on cody it says 260 if i click on windows 11 z volume is 260 which is actually 256 if i click on the for example manage snapshots i'll see all the snapshots that is being created for this particular data set so let's wait for this to load at the moment nothing in here i can actually delete the search and type the tank slash data and it will automatically filter down exactly watch the snapshots happening as you can see there is 1250 pages oh no 1250 snapshots so this is the right now true nas running on the bluefin it is a lot of couple of more things that change under reporting right now reporting gives you a bit more information exactly what's happening as you can see in this part of the time that's where the restart happened. There was a lot of action happening inside the true nas because of downloads and etc but this is how i updated my TrueNAS and this is how I probably I would suggest you to do that it's safe and no no hassle free and no 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 bad news after the update. 
So right now when the true NAS is updated and it was running, I can start my virtual machine for Cloud VM just to get the file browser up and running. And why not just restart my virtual Windows 11 machine where I showed you a Sky SCSI demo. The video, if you want to see about iSCSI and Windows OS, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to go and check that video up. That's it. Thank you much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.